Hey everyone, Chris here from Real Rideshare Stories. On this channel we do a lot of different things within the rideshare industry, so if you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. But before we get started, if you have a crazy Uber Lyft experience, whether you're a passenger or a driver, record it, send it my way, and maybe we can feature you on the channel. Alright, so today's video we're going to talk about the strike. Uh, there is a strike that is happening this Wednesday, May 8th. Uh, in several cities across uh, the US uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a little article for you um, I'm going to also post a link in the description below so you can read the whole thing um, but yeah we're going to talk about the strike um, kind of want to get your opinions too in the comments what you think uh, if it's going to be worth it if there's anything um, that can come about uh, what your thoughts are are you participating uh, so let me know in the comments below um, but if you didn't know, let's, let's go over a couple of details right now. Um, so this article is, hold on, it's called, uh, the headline is called Uber and Lyft drivers planning a massive strike this week over working conditions and pay rates. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Um, but yeah, this is the uh, news article, so I'm just going to read a little bit for you. Um, drivers for rideshare companies, Uber and Lyft, are planning strikes in cities across the country over working conditions and payment as the company gears up for its IPO. On Wednesday, May 8th, drivers in Chicago, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and New York are planning to strike between 7 a.m. and 9 p.m., according to an announcement. Uh, drivers in New York coordinated the strike with the New York Taxi Workers Alliance. Uh, writing in an announcement that they demand job security, livable income, uh, capping the company's commissions to a guaranteed 80 to 85 percent uh, from the fare to the driver. Uh, skipping forward a little bit, um, actually I'm going to skip a little bit more and then come back to, to something. Um, so uh, Sonam Lama, sorry if I butcher the name, uh, who has driven for Uber since 2015, said pay cuts and too many cars on the road diminish drivers' opportunities. He stated that he's striking for his kid's future. He has a five-year-old son, and he drives for Uber to support him. But it's becoming harder and harder, uh, he said on AM New York. Uber executives are getting rich off of our work. They should, be treat, or they should treat us with respect. We are striking to send a message that drivers will keep rising. Um, other strikes organized by Rideshare Drivers United uh, include drivers in San Francisco who will log out of their apps from lunch hour to evening rush hour and then from the rush hour to midnight. And then also another strike in LA is uh, planned for at least 24 hours. Uh, and then it just talks about how Lyft made its debut in March, uh, rising to a valuation of just over $29 billion on its first day. Uh, was the first rideshare company to go public, and the IPO is just the beginning of more than 100 tech unicorns that, that are valued at a billion or more, um, including its app rival, uh, rideshare uh, rival Uber, which is coming out later this year, probably very, very soon. Uh, that's part of the reason why this strike is happening is because of uh, Uber's IPO. So um, first... You know, let me t let me know. Did did you know about the strike, uh, and are you participating in it? Uh, again, it's Wednesday. Check your local area. Certain areas are different. So, like San Francisco has it at different times. Uh, LA is going for a four, full twenty four hours. Other areas are going from seven a.m. to nine p.m. Uh, so, what do you think? Are you in that area? Are you outside that area who are still striking? Um, and then, what's your thoughts? Now there is one thing that I did want to go back to because um, this was a, a very bad statement to hear um, and read, but it's also quoted and it's a real statement. So um, Wall Street investors are telling Uber and Lyft to cut down on driver income, stop incentives, and go faster to driverless cars. Uber and Lyft wrote in their S1 filings that they think they pay drivers too much already. Let me say that one more time. Uber and Lyft wrote in their S1 filings that they think they pay drivers too much already. So with the IPO, Uber's corporate owners are set to make billions while other drivers are left in poverty and can go bankrupt. Um, so yeah, I will leave a link to the description or leave a link in the description below so you can read the article. Um, 
but yeah, so first let's start off. I'm going to give you my opinions on um, what the drivers in New York are doing. They're looking for job security, livable incomes, and capping the company's commission to a guaranteed 80 to 85 percent of the fare. Um, some of that's good, some of that's not so great, um, but that's also my opinions. You know, having job security is great, especially if you're trying to combat against uh, driverless vehicles. Uh, they are coming, so the longest you can stay a driver is going to be the better because you can be able to make more money. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely something that is coming whether you like it or not. Um, is it going to be coming soon? I don't think so. I think there's going to be too much uh, in the way of that to happen quickly. I think there's going to be more uh, driver fueled vehicles versus driverless vehicles, uh, mostly because it's safety reasons. People aren't, aren't sure yet. They don't know what's going on. Um, so it's going to take a little bit of time for tr that trust to build up versus having somebody not drive uh, and have, be in a driverless vehicle. Uh, it is happening. It is going to be coming. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's going to come anytime soon. One of the things I did like, though, is uh, the 80 to 85% commission. You know, that, that's kind of cool. That's nice. Um, if you ever look at your driver breakdown, though, um, can you make more than that? Yeah, but most of the time you're going to make less. Right now, it's done by a per mile and per minute uh, rate. Uh, so you're getting paid by time and distance. So would you rather see it go from time and distance to a percentage uh, cap from the fare? Uh, or, I, or do you want to keep it the way it is? Uh, and then just get a increased pay, pay per mileage or wait time or, or time in general um, to kind of offset the pay. Um, and then... Uh, you know, ha they're also explaining what sounds like jobs, uh, and I'm I'm an independent contractor, as everybody else is a independent contractor for uh, Uber or Lyft. Um, so you know, things are a little bit different that way. Uh, I like being an independent contractor. I don't want to be an employee. Uh, I don't want to have a set schedule. I love the flexibility of when I can go on, uh, when I want to go off. Um, and if I don't want to drive for a month, I don't have to. If I don't want to drive for a year, I don't have to. Um, I, if I want to drive every day, I can. It's up to me and it's up to my schedule and, and, and my hustle um, as every other driver out there. So I enjoy that fact. I enjoy having the flexibility, being able to go when I want, you know, and then also kind of setting my terms on the amount that I want to make. Um, you know, maybe the per ride's lower or not. Uh, but at least I can still go out and make, make any money that, that I might need. Um, but yeah, I don't want to be a, uh, an employee. You know, I, I got out of that, that scam a long time ago. And uh, I mean, being an employee is great for some people, but I, I like the flexibility. I like the independent contractor. I like being in the gig economy. It's great. Uh, it's it's a, a, just a nice way to go. Uh, and, you know, I have a lot of other projects go going on. You know, I, <laughs> there's a lot of time dealing with editing videos and putting them together and, and all that. So, uh, yeah, I want to be able to have the time to do that. And uh, then I have other projects going on, too. So, you know, it, it's not a simple thing. Uh, but, yeah, it's definitely great for the flexibility, and I like that. Um, also, then let's go to the statement where they said that uh, Wall Street investors are telling Uber and Lyft to cut down on driver income, stop incentives, and go faster to driverless vehicles. Well, like I said, driverless vehicles are coming whether we like it or not, just the way it is. Um, right now, though, I, I really don't think a lot of people are, are feeling too safe behind the wheel uh, of a driverless vehicle or in the, pa in the passenger seats, uh, only because every time you hear on the news, you hear of accidents or something that happens that causes problems or um, panic when it comes to driverless vehicles. So that trust issue is going to take a long time for it to overcome. Uh, but when it does, it, it yeah, it's the end of all driver vehicles, uh, whether it's Uber and Lyft or not. It's going to be the end of driver vehicles altogether. Uh, so that's going to be a much different aspect in things. But obviously, Wall Street investors want to get the most bang for the buck. Employees are always, and in this case, independent contractors are always 
um, the most paid um, out of anything. It's just the way it is. It's in every single business out there. Uh, so when you look at trying to trim, trim the fat, they say, uh, that's you know cutting employees because they cost companies the most amount of money. Um, and that's a damn shame because you know being able to help other people, that's a good thing. Um, you know, jobs can't, or I'm sorry, businesses can't exist without their employees. Uh, if there was no money in the bank accounts and the, the employees had a high morale um, and really liked the business and really felt included, you know, they'll bend over backwards to help make sure it works. But if you don't take care of your employees and something happens, they're the first ones to leave and they're never looking back and then your business fails. So, you know, having a strike is a good thing or organized uh, drivers, you know, that's always a great thing. And that's what's happening on Wednesday. So uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, personally, I don't think much is going to happen. Uh, I don't think it's going to be that uh, much of anything. Uh, reason is because it's only for 12 or 14 hours in some places, 24 in others. Um, and it's not long enough. Uh, if you want to make a real dent in something, do it on the busiest days. You know, do a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, maybe Sunday involved in that, half a week. Um, shut down everybody, nobody drives, that, uh, that'll send a message. Uh, another thing, do it for an entire week. That'll also send a message because now you're doing an entire week. You want to do it during busy times. You want to do it during uh, just a length of time as well too. They're gonna they would feel it um, at that point. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so one day, half a day, I, I don't think this is going to make much of a difference for most people. I think it's going to feel good for those people who are trying to stand up. Uh, and I think that's a great, great idea, a great concept. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of other drivers out there that probably don't know about that. So make sure you share this video with them so they know if they want to participate within um, a strike, then they, then they have the knowledge and know how to. Um, they also know the times to do that with. Um, but yeah, just share it with them, let them know. Um, also, one last thing about that is... Um, it's not just in those cities, there's other areas that are, it's just not as organized. Um, so there's a lot of people who are out, who are uh, out reaching out, trying to s just go to everybody and let them know. Um, it's definitely a lot better than last month's strike in LA that uh, not many people knew about. Um, and that really had zero effect for anybody. So uh, again, I think this one's more, there's more people involved, there's more organization, there's a lot more behind it. So it could have uh, a little dent put in, but overall in the grand scheme of things, make it four days, three, four days total, make it a whole week. Um, you know, that, I think that's the only way you're really gonna send a message and that's the only way um, anything may happen. Um, but the biggest thing that is one of the, the Worst things, though, is when Uber and Lyft state that in their S-1 filing that they think they pay drivers too much already. Um, I think you guys need to step away from your corporate uh, income and invest in investment-backed income and go out on the road and use that income for a little while and see what happens. Um, you know, do what you got to do, but... Uh, yeah, drivers are gonna they're gonna want to make money. It's it's the way it is. Um, you know they're they're out there. They're helping push along a concept, and in my opinion, a really great concept. I mean, Uber and Lyft is is a phenomenal way for people to uh, go from point A to point B anywhere. Really, uh, it's it's a great concept. It's an awesome uh, venture. It's an amazing idea, and. I, I enjoy it. I like doing it. I have fun. I meet p different people. It's great. Um, could the pay be better? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm not going to ever say no to more money. Um, but it's the, the thing where people are getting upset is is that it's they're taking money away, whether it be from taking away promotions or prime time or surge or whatever it might be, um, as well as streaks, uh, uh, quests. Um, and different promotions, uh, if you're taking that away and then you're also decreasing the pay uh, per mileage um, or, or during the time, 
uh, that's where issues arise because now you're, you're taking away f and people are making less than what they were able to before. Um, so that's a problem there. You know, if you were continuing to operate at the same level and either upping the passengers uh, pay what they pay um, for a ride, they're still going to use the service. Uh, if you put the, the passengers rate up a little bit um, here and there, they're not going to notice. They're not going to really care. They're going to be happy because they're still getting their personal ride to and from a place. It's quick. It's easy. Their drivers are back, have background checks. Um, it's fun. Uh, it's, it's just a cool, cool thing to do. And I, th I think it's great and phenomenal. But, you know, there's got to be better communication between drivers and the companies themselves. So it's going to be something very interesting over the next uh, a couple of days to see if anything happens from it. Uh, make sure to stay tuned because I am going to do a video probably on Wednesday of if I've heard anything that happens, try to talk to a few people who um, are participating within it and also um, then a follow up a few days later to see if anything came about from it. Uh, if there was any change, if there's anything new planned, um, whatever it might be. Uh, so make sure you subscribe or ring the bell for notifications. Also give a uh, thumbs up for the video. Comment below too on what you think. Uh, if you're t participating in it, uh, in, in the strike, where you are, um, if you think it's going to work or not, uh, what you'd like to see, let us know um, and let's get a little interaction going and a little dialogue, see what's going on, what you guys think. Because uh, I am definitely interested to know as well what your opinions and your thoughts are. Um, with that being said, though, that's the end of today's video. Uh, again, uh, just wrapping up, though, it is, uh, if you plan on doing the Uber Lyft strike, it is, uh, again, Wednesday, May 8th. It's this Wednesday from uh, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. in most locations. Uh, talk to somebody maybe uh, in your area and see if it's more uh, or if it's different. Like in San Francisco and L.A., it is different times that they've told. As always, never drink and drive, always tip your drivers, and we'll see you next time.